ಚಿರಾನಂಬುಜ ಪೂಜಿ ಸುರ್ನರೋತ್ತಮೈರ್ಮುದ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಶ್ರೀಘನಶ್ಯಾಂ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀ ಜಯ ಓ ಮಟಿ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಲಾಡ್ ಅವರ್ಡ್ ಬಿಲವ್ಡ್ ಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಪಾತ್ ಮೇಕರ್ ಟು ಅ ಲಿಬ್ರೇಷನ್ ಪೂಜ್ಯಪಾತ್ ಗುರುಜಿ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಸಂತೊ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಿವೋಟೀಸ್ ಜೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಸದ್ಗುರು ಶ್ರೀ ಸ್ಕುಡಾನಂದ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಇನ್ ಭಕ್ತ ಚಿಂತಾಮಣಿ ಒನ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಫೋರ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಸದ್ಗುರು ನಿ ಸ್ಕುಡಾನಂದ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬರ್ಸ್ ದ ಇನ್ಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ in a different religion meaning a different part of the india where there was there was no first any satsangi or no one as a uh, no one in the village saw bhagwan swaminar as a devotee but after one santo came there and santo preached the righteousness and all the principles and rules and regulations code and conducts prescribed by maharaj then after first binda become a duty of bhagwan swami and then after most of the villagers they also accepted the swami narayan faith and whoever witness divine powers or divine darshan of maharaj Sadguru Nitskunan has read down their incident in 154th chapter of Bhakta Chintamani. Now again, for the same village of Dua in northern India, Sadguru Nitskunan has described many other incidents happened in the same village in 155th chapter of Bhakta Chintamani. Dhanya Dhanya Dua Gama Ma ಜ್ಯಾ ಭಕ್ತರ ಹೇ ಭಾವಿಕ ಸಹಾಯ ಕರಿ ಜೇನಿ ಶ್ಯಾಮಡೆ ತೇಹ ಕಹು ಹವೇಕಾಯಿ ಸದ್ಗುರು ನಿಸ್ಕುರಾನ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಸೇಜ್ ದರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾನಿ ಡ್ಯೂಟಿಸ್ ಲಿವ್ ಇನ್ ದ ವಿಲೇಜ್ ಆಫ್ ದುವಾ ಬಟ್ ಅಮಾಂಗ್ ದೋಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾನಿ ಡ್ಯೂಟಿಸ್ whoever has witnessed the divinity or divine incident related to bhagwan swaminarayan's divine power or his divine darshan i'll try to describe some of them there was a devotee by the name of loki he was also became a devotee of bhagwan swaminarayan after having association with the binda and the other devotees in the village now after one day after one month or a year he become a very staunch follower of bhagwan swami narayan most of the time he passed in the devotion of bhagwan swami narayan and finally when the last moment came meaning the day for his death was there at that day bhagwan swaminar himself divinely appear over there maharaj gave darshan to this loki not only that but maharaj also gave darshan to all the other villagers even maharaj gave darshan to those who are not the believer in bhagwan swaminar now after giving darshan to all as having darshan of maharaj they all first got surprised that those who were non believer they were thinking in their mind throughout our life we believe that bhagwan swami narayan is not a bhagwan but that's the fake things but today he gave us darshan he divinely appear here in our village and that's why now from today we believe that bhagwan swaminar is a true god 
and those who were the satsangi they all overjoyed by the darshan of maharaj now as lucky got the darshan of maharaj he first bowed down to maharaj and santo because maharaj did not came alone but maharaj came with many santos and devotees all those were also divine then maharaj as lucky bowed down to maharaj he offered prostration and thereafter maharaj uh, maharaj said lucky today your final day i am coming here to take you into my akshardham are you ready then lucky said yes maharaj that's my greatest joy that you yourself come to me to take me into your akshardham and in this way after this short conversation between maharaj and lucky maharaj himself took lucky into his akshardham and all the other villagers the devotees as well as the non believers they all have darshan of maharaj and while they all was uh, present over there and they all watching this that maharaj himself with lucky went into akshardham back so this is the first incident in the second incident as this uh, this incident watched by the many villagers and those who were non believers they they were talking with each other that many persons died in our village but we have never seen such incident that bhagwan himself come to one to take him into his divine dham so bhagwan swami narayan is only the supreme god on this earth who is forever present on this earth and who is ready to take care of his duties understanding this much glory and greatness of bhagwan swami narayan they all also become a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan now after that there was another devotee in the same village of dua his name was prannath he had too much affection for maharaj and that's why as he every day perform daily puja in the morning he always bow down to maharaj he touch the holy feet of maharaj in the form of murti and every day he did uh, he perform puja with great affection and devotion for maharaj but he had one small desire and that is to have a charnarvind of maharaj so this desire remain in his heart but at that those day were not like today's meaning there was no any technology so that we can got a print or we can uh, get print on a canvas nothing that was not the those day of technology and that's why he desire for the charanarvin but how can he attain the second thing is that he was very far from the gujarat so for him it is very difficult to even have a darshan of such a divine charanarvin if he uh, lived at the time in the gujarat so he can have a chance to have a darshan of charnarvin from any santo or the other devotees but he lived very far from the gujarat and that's why he had no chance to have a darshan of charnarvin that's why he desired for a charnarvin so many times he prayed to maharaj in the puja for this charnarvin once upon a day maharaj himself become very pleased upon prannath and while he was doing puja in the morning so maharaj divinely appear manifested in his puja and maharaj himself 
gave him his own Chernarvin printed on the canvas. So after giving this Charnarvin to Pranath, Maharaj gave Darsan not only to Pranath but also to others. And after this, Maharaj disappeared from his puja, but Charnarvin remained in the puja. So Pranath every day performed puja with a great love for Maharaj, and he always have a darshan with very careful and very very intense love for Maharaj and in this way he even experienced a divinity and great joy from having darshan of this Charnarvin every day. So this is what Maharaj gave divine darshan as well as the divine print of Charnarvin to his devotee Prana. There was another thing in this case. Pranath was alone a devotee in the house because in his family from tradition meaning his forefathers they also did not believe in other religion meaning they did not believe in a God because they have accepted such a faith that in that faith they believe that if we acquire a knowledge regarding our own self then we will we our own self we become a god there will be uh, there was no any god in this world who control this cosmos in this way their belief is totally wrong but still they strictly adhere to this belief for many long times. So this Pranath's father, his name was Kesar and this Kesar, Kesar Bhai, he was a very firm and strong believer that there is no God in this world. And that's why he was one of the leader, one of the preacher of this cult in the village but his one virtue is that he never disturb or never say anything or to say stop to perform puja or anything to prana and that's why even though he was non-believer still he never become a disturbance to worshipping Bhagavan Swaminarayan for prana Now many days passed and Kesar Bhai, he was believing in a faith of Kabir. So he never, the person who believe in this faith of Kabir, they never believe in God, not, not only that, but they will not believe in the pilgrimage places or any particular uh, vrath or meaning of fast or scriptures or particular rules and regulations regarding religion, they never believe in such kind of things. They only believe in a gnan, meaning they only believe of not a true knowledge regarding one's own self or the regarding the knowledge of Bhagwan, but they only believe that if one acquire a true knowledge who we are, then we our own self become a god that's it nothing else no any rules and regulations no need to perform or no need to uh, follow codes and commands nothing that is their belief so case uh, by now many days after his last day was there and as throughout his life he never believe in Bhagwan, so definitely Jamduts will come to take him to the hell. And for this Kesar Bhai, many Jamduts came there. But 
केसर बाय हैज वन वर्चूज एंड दैट इज ही नेवर डिस्टर्ब और स्टाप और इवन ट्राई टू स्टाप हिज सन प्राणनाथ टू वैन ही वॉज वर्सिपिंग भगवान स्वामीनारायण डेली इन द मॉर्निंग ही वॉज परफॉर्मिंग पूजा ही नेवर डिस्टर्ब हिम एंड दैट्स वाई केसर बाय ही डिड नॉट केम इन टू हैंड्स ऑफ दिस जमदूत बट as he had many desire in his mind and that's why he become a ghost now after becoming a ghost he even lived he even stay in his own house many horrors noise he was producing at the time of night many people of the village they many time have fear and that's why they avoid to come to meet pranat or even they try to avoid to pass even by the whole uh, house of this pranat they have a fear of ghost but this ghost is no else but pranat's father kesar by himself now once upon a day this kesar bai in the form of a ghost he enter into the body of his wife meaning pranath's mother and through her kesar bai in the form of ghost he speak to the people that this faith of kabir is totally false he is a fake religion or we can we cannot say that this is a religion not only that but he in mar he said only bhagwan swami narayan is a true god and if you believe that i am i became a ghost so not only that but whoever the leaders and whoever believe in the faith of kabir they all become a ghost even though you cannot see them but i can see all of them by declaring this he said bhagwan swami nar is only true god and we all should follow him and we all should per- perform his puja and worshiping him daily and also follow each and every commands given by him and for that you all should contact and you all should have a company of my own son pranath so that you can learn about bhagwan swami narayan's religion in this way even though kesar bai become a ghost he himself entered into his wife body and through her he speak to the people and declare that this kabir faith is totally fact and only swami narayan religion is a true religion on this earth now all get a surprise that how this kesar bai become a ghost but those who were who had a good intellect they all accepted that this is a true thing and that's why they accepted his advice and they all become a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan in this way this kesar bai even though he became a ghost he preach regarding bhagwan swami narayan's divinity and bhagwan swami narayan's greatness and also he gave the knowledge regarding the fake and false religion he himself throughout his life believed in the philosophy of that religion and he himself accepted that i am wrong and my son his devotion and his god is true so by declaring this he said now even though i am a ghost still i have to even though i have to suffer and tolerate tolerate too much pain in this body of ghost now only because of my son pranath's devotion towards bhagwan swami narayan and as he was chanting bhagwan swami narayan's holy name so i get a 
liberation even from this body of ghost in this way even only by listening maha mantra swami narayan kesar bhai he can liberate from he can get a liberation from the body of ghost and finally first maharaj send him into badrika ashram there after performing many austerities and i finally he also uh he also will be sent into akshardham so this is what the incident written in the 155th chapter of bhakta chintamani by niskuranan swami after de- uh, after declaration of this kesar bai in the form of ghost and as he said now i am uh from this moment now i am not remain as a ghost and uh bhagwan swaminarayan is here and he is ready to send me into badrika ashram and by saying this he stopped to say anything and he relieved from the body of ghost and as all the other villagers they witnessed this incident those who are the witness uh who have witnessed this incident they all become a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan and they not only become swami narayan devotee but they all follow advice and they all kept a company of this kesar bhai son meaning of pranath because pranath was a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan and maharaj himself gave him his own divine charanarvin in his puja so by understanding this much greatness and divinity of bhagwan swami narayan we should also cultivate more and more faith in the form of bhagwan swami narayan and we should also believe that the other faith or other philosophies or other belief whatever prevails in this world whether the people believe that that's the true but for us as we are the devotees of bhagwan swami narayan so for us there is no anything else but only the philosophies and the true knowledge of uh, of sikshapatri and the vachanamrut and our scriptures are the true and all the other are not for us by understanding this niskuran so also describe the other incident written in the same chapter many other incident the two incident written in the same chapter but today this is enough sri ganashyam maharaj ni jay प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जे नजर समी पेर हो अमारिये ह नजर समी पेर हो अमारिये 
घनश्याम महाराज नीजे हरि कृष्ण महाराज नीजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान नीजे सुप्रीम ऑल माइटी और बिलवेड घनश्याम महाराज पाथ मेकर टू आवर लिबरेशन आवर अदमोस्ट डियर पूज्य गुरुजी पूज्य संतो पूज्य भगत जी एंड ऑल ऑफ यू डिवोटीज जय स्वामी नारायण just like how any and every company has an official name brand or a trademark you can say just for example when we think of the company dell which makes computers majority we know that it's a quality company if you want to buy a laptop or a desktop we know that dell has a good reputation if you think about the name apple the first thing that comes to mind is the phone itself it has a name it has a reputation in the world it's a trademark it's a good machine to use when we think of google we think first it's the best search engine for me everything else yahoo msn etc so on and so forth everyone uses afterwards but google is a top search engine it's fit into our mind if we think about it in a basis of universities in the united states harvard university when that comes to mind we know that it's the most elite and prominent college to get education in the united states not only that but you can say in the world because all these things in the world have made a name have made or have you can say compiled a trademark a reputation for themselves due to that factor whenever its name is mentioned people know people have a mindset people have you can say a kind of impression that this company is good this company is okay in the same way for those loyadam parivar devotees for those you can say members of loyadam when someone thinks of the name loyadam you can even ask an outsider a person who's not so much of a devotee and a person who comes to mandir on and off not on a consistent basis but when they hear the name loyadam the first thing that comes to mind is sakotso yes that's right sakotso some of you are wondering what is that and most of you are probably yes that is correct sakotso well in case you didn't know the four months of penance called chaturmas are over have been long over and it's finally sakotso season here in the chapters of loyadam not only in the united states but also in india in in the united kingdom in canada and so on and so forth but right now currently we're in the middle in the heart of sakotso season but when we go on vichran outside santos or we go to someone's house for katha varta santos usually tend to tell the story of sakotso obviously in gujarati more speculating the crowd that's in front of them but for all of those who don't know the story of sakotso in english it would be something fantastic to understand that what is this sakotso what is exactly when people say the name loyadam why is why do they come straight to sakotso what is the significance well there is a story behind it obviously to any and every incident there is a story behind it but this story is special this story is touched by shri ji maharaj himself and that's why i would like to conduct today pretty much 
the story of Sakutsu and how it came about and what's so significant about it. So in doing so, we have to go back in time 200 years before and have to go into the moment. So whenever this, you can say, charitra is being read, develop a mental image inside your mind and witness the whole incident so you can develop that bliss, that happiness that those devotees were witnessing at that time. So here we go. Sakotso and Loya. Winter was well underway. The farms were lush with soft, ripe brinjals, meaning brinjals are, you can say, baby eggplants, the small eggplants. Sri Hari noticed the brinjals in the farms while traveling on his mare or his horse to Loya. That evening in Loya, Kengarbai of Kolyad came for Sri Hari's darshan and offered 180 kilograms of ghee to Sri Hari. Now, in that time, there was many, many devotees that believed that Bhagwan Swamiran was supreme. And there was more people that believed that Bhagwan was wrong. Or he wasn't Bhagwan, he was just some kind of magician. But those who did believe that Bhagwan was a Bhagwan, and those who understood his supremacy, supremacy completely surrendered all their money, goods, wealth, everything to Bhagwan, not even looking at their economical status or not even looking at their situation just to please him just to please Bhagwan. So a devotee by the name of Kengarbai came with a hundred and eighty kilograms of ghee. Ghee is purified butter. A hundred and eighty kilograms. If that can be converted in you can say pounds, that's more than four hundred pounds of purified butter. So what can be done with this purified butter? Let's take a look. Sri Hari was pleased with his seva. From this offering and after having seen the bountiful brinjal crops, Sri Hari decided to host a sakotso for the sadhus and devotees. He ordered the devotees to gather another 620 kilograms of ghee and 1200 kilograms of tender brinjals. Now in that time, the amount of 1200 gram, 1200 kilograms of brinjals and a total of you can say 900 kilograms of ghee. This was very very difficult but Bhagwan was Bhagwan. If he wished for anything it would happen in an instant. And Bhagwan ordered his sadhus and devotees to bring these goods, these ingredients, these supplies necessary to make a sakotso. Now to define what a sakotso is, this is a subject of food. And pretty much in, you can say, Hinduism, inside of Gujarat especially, the cuisine is where the traditional cuisine, you can say, is where the people there eat something called rotli or rotlo, which is kind of like a bread. And with that, kind of to dip it, because the bread would, or the, the bread, you can say, would be very, very dry. You need something with it. They would have this kind of, you can say, sabji, or have this kind of sak. That's how the name came about, sak od so. So the sak that Bhagwan was going to make was from brinjals, the baby, you can say, eggplants. And the ghee was the key ingredient to make and you can say uh, to heat these um, brinjals up, making it called a vagar, which we'll see in the near future what that is exactly. But these two items were traditionally ate by the people, especially in Gujarat, along with rice and uh, a bowl of soup. But the main, you can say, item at hand was the sak, or the sabji, you can call it, that was eaten with the bread. So, after these items were ordered, 40 pits were dug to be used as cooking stoves. At that time, 
they didn't have any kind of electric stoves or these natural ga ga gas stoves or you can say even in India currently propane tank stoves or anything like that so what they had to do was they had to manually dig pits in the ground and then you can say light wood inside light it on fire and make a stove manually from that pit so Maharaj had ordered for 40 pits to be dug the pits were filled with firewood and covered with huge pots the brinjals were sliced vertically and stuffed with a mixture of spices and flour then the stuffed brinjals were placed in the pots each batch of cooked brinjals consisted of 30 kilograms of brinjals and 20 kilograms of ghee now whoever has eaten ghee clarified butter would know and would understand the factor that this is a very very heavy heavy you can say substance to take or intake into one's body it's something where even maybe taking even one spoon of it would be very difficult then think about 20 kilograms of ghee versus only 30 kilograms of brinjals but Maharaj he had a nature he had such a kind nature to give the most and the best of everything to everyone and anyone he had such a nature that can be seen and reminded in our Puja Dada Guruji of giving and offering food almshouses to everyone that Dada Guruji acquired that quality and in that same fashion our Puja Guruji as of right now performing the Seva of Maharaj and this whole Samaritan sect has the same nature of giving and giving and giving and not taking anything because in the Vachnamrut Maharaj says that such kind of a son all his actions are for everyone else he does not do anything for himself he does not do anything for his selfish motive and connecting back to Sriji Maharaj in this very incident Maharaj we can just think that why would he do such a, a vagar and expensive the price of ghee very very expensive you can say even in these days right now then think about 200 years ago how expensive it would been and at that time the capacity and you can say the you can say financial status of all those devotees bringing that ghee but all those devotees as I mentioned had the power of surrendership and due to that this was an easy task but back to Maharaj his nature was so kind and compassionate that he loved making and giving to others and if we think about it in that time and all the avatars that have incarnated in the past no other incarnation like Bhagwan Swaminare has performed such kinds of tasks for his devotees such kinds of you can say incidences for his devotees such as making food and serving them to his saints and disciples and various various people that were unknown giving and giving such a Maharaj that wrote his own manuscript that no other avatar has performed such a Maharaj who spoke his own principles and were narrated by the most elite and prominent saints who compose who are composed with the utmost saintliness such kind of a Maharaj who constructed six temples by himself such kind of a Maharaj who showed numerous and numerous miracles and his divine Akshradham such kind of a Maharaj who washed away the sins of the most you can say most vile people and sent them to Akshradham such kind of a Maharaj who initiated kings initiated the utmost elite elite singers and made them into his servants and they stayed his servants without even a question without even a comment without even 
a blur or without even even one word just imagine a king becoming a servant of a god and at that time that god was in human form how difficult can it be to believe but bhagwan was bhagwan and no one no one can measure or fathom his greatness and such kind of a maharaj performed such kind of leelas for us proving that he was is and always will be supreme over any avatar you can see his supremacy in each and every one of his incidences nevertheless going back to our story Sri Hari prepared the vagar for the brinjals in the ghee when the ghee reached the correct temperature Sri Hari threw handfuls of mustard seeds cumin seeds please imagine this in your mind and you'll be able to actually go to this area and see Maharaj performing this leela and cloves into the pot. After the crackling stopped, he added shredded ginger, chopped chili, turmeric powder, and red chili powder with the quick movements of his hands. Devotees and sadhus were standing by each stub. On Sri Hari's queue, they threw the brinjals into the pot on the stub. Sri Hari moved with speed in agility from one stove to the next. Imagine 40 pots going at one time. Who can reach each one? Who has the capacity or who has the mentality to know that in this pot, this much, this pot, this much, I have to stir this pot, just 40 of them. Then think about it. Bhagwan himself controls infinite universes, controls infinite souls controls infinite muktos that are inside of his akshradam and knows each and every one of their thoughts imagine how great of a power bhagwan is imagine how great of a you can say power bhagwan is yet his greatness is not fathomable it's not we cannot comprehend it but we can just think just a little bit by his charitras and by reading his divine vachnamrut and understand merely a little but going back moved with agility from one to the next the tamarik powder had stained his hands and clothes yellow the heat from the stoves caused sweat to form on his forehead and gather on the tip of his nose however when combined with the splendor of his murti, the glow from his face resembled the beauty of a pearl. Sri Hari's enchanting murti attracted the devas and devis to gather into the sky for his darshan. Premanand Swami at that time wrote a bhaktipad, meaning a kirtan capturing the leela of this sakotsu. Sri Hari approached the last pit and noticed that there was an aged woman leaning on a stick near the pot not many devotees know about this prasang exactly but this was actually what happened Sri Hari recognized her immediately mother do you remember me Maharaj asked the devotees were curious as to how Sri Hari knew the elderly lady Sri Hari continued before the elderly woman could respond mother I came to your house when I was traveling through Gujarat, meaning as Nilkanruni, you were commemorating the twelfth day after the passing of your mother-in-law. You fed me khichdi and milk. I spent the night in your fields. The elderly lady was in tears. Prabhu, you remember me. You have thousands of devotees to remember, yet you recalled me. At that time, Bhagwan was Bhagwan. This was at least, at least 20 years later. Yet, Maharaj was Maharaj, proving that only a god can remember such kind of a small incident, a, a lady, and how Bhagwan was fed one night khichdi and milk. If we think about it, we can't even remember what we ate two weeks ago. Exactly if I were to give you, if today is the 18th, 18th? Yes, 18th. Today's the 18th. Suppose it was, you can say, December 6th. 
if I ask someone, do you remember what you ate in the afternoon, how much you ate, would you be able to remember? Yes? No. Or even on that day, the 6th, no. Or even you can say yesterday or even two days ago, right? Mostly, but saying Maharaj remembered a prasang 20 years ago on that on that exact prasang where this lady had fed me khichdi and milk this was Maharaj's supremacy but the lady's reaction the woman the old elderly woman's reaction she said that Prabhu you remember me you have thousands of devotees to remember why do you recall me and that's when a kirtan kadi from Premran Swami that I remember that Premran Swami has written in his kirtan pleading to Maharaj, singing to Maharaj that Amajeva Prabhu Tamne Ganapan Tamo Amare Ek Prema Sakhi Vinanti Kareche Rakho amari te kare guna kari ne maap. Meaning, Brahman Swami is saying that um, there is thousands and thousands and thousands of devotees like us, but you are just one. In the same way, this elderly lady filled with bhakti, compassion for Maharaj, felt the same and Sri Hari replied with a smile mother I never forget those who serve me even if it is something as simple as a meal of khichdi and milk I'm reminded of our Puja Guruji that Puja Guruji has said in his katha that if someone has done even the smallest thing for me the smallest service I, I cannot forget it and I feel like repaying that person back no matter how or in whatever form I do it in the same way Maharaj you can see here said that I never forgot about you I remembered you the lady bowed down to Sri Hari her weeping eyes provided the water to wash Sri Hari's feet Sri Hari was moved by her bhakti Sri Hari turned his attention to the last pot of brinjals just as he was about to prepare the vagar for the last batch, a group of devotees arrived from Bua. Kandas, a merchant, was among those devotees. He had heard a great deal about Sri Hari's Mema from traveling sadhus, but had never met Sri Hari in person. Kandas was unsettled by his first impression of Sri Hari. Purnapurshottam Narayan looked like a simple Brahmin cook. The spice stained clo clothing and the sweat smeared over his forehead and his arms were not befitting of Bhagwan. Kandas thought to himself, what a waste of time. I might as well head back to Bua. Now at that time, Sri Hari heard this, but Maharaj knew that he had to perform an operation. But before this operation, what should we understand about this Charita? Well, a couple things. Number one, at that time, Maharaj had taken a human form that people can see that had arms, legs, everything, eyes, just like a normal human would. Now, when a person is praised, you can say, I'm not saying person, but when someone is praised as being God on earth, and then how should a God be? Sitting on a throne, having wearing the best clothing in the world, the most expensive clothing, then someone might believe that this is God. But when wearing the most stained clothing, all sweat coming from oneself, then smell everything you can say at that time, how could one believe possibly that it was God himself? Well, in the Mara, in, in the Vach number, Maharaj himself says, to realize all of God's actions and incidences as redemptive is the very dharma of a devotee. 
and only one who understands this can be called a perfect devotee of God. Only one who understands God to be flawless can transcend Maya. Nonetheless, Marat says, God suppress suppresses his divinity from the be for the benefits of the Jeeves. However, those who do not understand this believe that God is only divine when he is in his abode. When present on earth, he is not divine, but Mike. Furthermore, they maintain the belief that as with ordinary Jeeves, God also has to suffer the fruits of his actions. Now, this is a misunderstanding. But to understand this misunderstanding, we have to understand that Bhagwan is, you can say, right now, here present, but we don't have the capability of talking to him, meeting him, and greeting him. But we definitely have, we definitely are fortunate to have the, you can say, company of the Ekantik Satpurush, as per our Puja Guruji. Now, let me give you a small incident. Suppose that Puja Guruji is taking his meal, and he is, we don't know that he is doing Dharna Parna. And he, we enter into the room, and we see him eating a very, very good meal. What do we think at first hand if we're not a satsangi, if we don't have the association of santos, or if we don't have, you can say, the knowledge of the Vachnamrut? We think that santos aren't supposed to be eating all this. This is, this is not. Santos are supposed to be eating very, very little. But we do not know that he is doing a fast called Dharna Parna. But nonetheless, our thoughts versus the Ekantik Satpurush, he has a body, we have a body. He's wearing saffron clothing, we're wearing simple clothing, colored clothing, you can say, jeans and pants, pants and shirt. So, what's the difference? He's eating in a wooden bowl, we're eating in a foam dish. All these thoughts develop, and finally, in our mind, we say that, how could this happen? How could he be eating like this? This is not a saintly manner, you can say, action. This is our problem. We see, we perceive, but we do not believe him to be divine. We have not even given or the opportunity or the open window. We have not even taken the open door to understand who he really is to associate with santos and understand him. Due to that, we perceive a fault. In the same way, when 200 years ago, these kinds of incidences happened even with Maharaj himself. So, Maharaj replied, Sri Hari read Kandas is mine and asked Muktanan Swami, Muktananji, what is to be said of a person who travels to Kashi and fails to sip from the Ganga waters? Meaning, Kashi is a city, you can say, you, in a very, uh, very, very scholar, scholarly, academic city in uh, northern India, and it's on the bank of the river of Ganga. Now, Maharaj is asking that what is to be said of a person who goes to Kashi, meaning goes to the city, and pretty much which is right on the river of Ganga, but does not sip its water. Muktan Swami smiled and said, Sri Hari, such a man is a fool. Kandas immediately, what Maharaj is trying to say is that you meet Bhagwan himself. Obviously, Bhagwan is not going to say this, but Bhagwan is saying indirectly that you meet Bhagwan himself, but you do not understand that he is Bhagwan. You think of him as a mere human being. That's the problem. And Muktan Swami smiled and said that such a person is a mere fool. Kandas immediately realized his mistake. Sri Hari glanced at Kandas yet again and sent him into Samadhi. In Samadhi, Kandas witnessed all of the previous incarnations offering their puja to the tambric stained Brahman. He awoke from the Samadhi and prostrated at, at Sri Hari's feet. Kandas stayed in Loya for several days and strengthened his conviction in Sri Hari's swarup. Finally, the Sakotso had ended. Bhagwan continued this Leela. Every day he would make shak for two months, nonstop for his devotees and whoever came by and he would feed and feed. 
and off of that tradition, now 200 years later, in this very mandir in the United States, Loy Adam, New Jersey, this tradition continues. And on that occasion, our Puja Guruji turns 59 years old next year in 2017 on July 26th. And for that occasion, as of maybe two weeks ago, Puja Santos have started a scheme to fulfill and perform 59 sakotsos, meaning go to devotees' homes and make this sak and feed devotees and santos and their goal is to make 59 sakotsos before this target of July 26th so that's why I was motivated and uh, decided that it's something to know that sakotso is not an ordinary lila but it's something that's divine and it's occurring right now in Loyadam as per that lecture finally Winter Workshop 2016 is now only officially 12 days away, starting on December 30th, 31st, and January 1st. Everyone will be celebrating the New Year's here uh, at Loyada Menje on December 31st during the nighttime. We have many, many special, uh, you can say, programs organized for the kids. Uh, there's over 100 kids attending as of right now from various states also uh, even Canada. So the registration is still open on the swamiran.org. If ever anyone is, you can say, uh, interested, you can sign up. For accommodation purposes, if you sign up, you can be accommodated as well. So that would be very helpful. Saying this, my humble, Jay Swaminarayan.